Hello, community. Something happened. I didn't know exactly why, but it happened yesterday. When I prepared my last video, you know it was about this hugging face transformers, and now you can connect them via uh, artificial intelligence, a control artificial intelligence that is steering all the active transformer elements on the hugging face up, coordinating them, bringing them into exactly the sequence that we need for our result. And I thought about this, and it took me a whole night, but somehow I understood that this is now a complete system. If you have a platform with thousands of elements, and those elements are separated, but suddenly you give them a connectome, everybody can be connected with everybody else. And there's a very limited intelligence. With time, this intelligence will grow. And if you think that if we have this just on one technology platform, the moment it connects, for example, via LangChain to all the other internet APIs, all the other internet apps that are out there, there is something that is a system that is defined. And when this system reaches a critical complexity, it simply becomes operational with a minimal, if you want, intelligence, but it becomes operational. And we treat it already as kind of operational. And then the thing was simple for me. Then the technology, or the AI technology as I understand it, simply becomes ubiquitous. Let me give you two examples. If you stand up and you look a little bit over your screen, you look in four weeks, or four months, think about TV or social media. In my last video, I showed you that with the Gradio tools that we can integrate here on the Transformer Network, we had text to video, just five seconds. But let's say today ChatGPT writes a story. I write, or I just tell ChatGPT, okay, now agglomerate every five sentences into a group and put this group to a text to video transformer. Generate a very five second long video. There's a video AI that will cut the movie clips. We have 6,000 separate clips, for example. Bring them together. And if there is a certain, <laughs> let's call it a design artificial intelligence system that makes sure that the scenes are homogeneous and you have a real smooth transition between all the scenes, and you have another, you know, audio AI we have today, to choose the right music for the content that's happening in these five second video clips, you can create a movie and you can do it very rudimentary and very, very broken, but you can do it today. This is a technology that just needs to evolve, but the technology is there. Maybe two, three, five years, and you have Hollywood and Bollywood AI movies. So there will be another company, like we have today, maybe Netflix that will compute for you another movie every day, every evening, when you come home. You have a very special movie, maybe just only graded for you, for your mood, for your preferences, the person you want to see, the locations you want to see, if you're in sci-fi or in romance or whatever. So this is clear where this path will, will go to. And as I told you, when this technology becomes ubiquitous, it is omnipresent. And therefore, you won't notice it. It's like electricity for us today. I think about social media. I had to love today. I read that Google now announces its BART POM2 integration in Gmail. And it said, you can set up that it automatically answers all your Gmails you, you receive. And for a particular person, you can define a style, how you want to reply. And no, not you reply, but Bart replies for you, so if it's a formal email, or if it's a friend, a very friendly, familiar email, you can have access to personal details like your calendar, or where you want to meet some friends, or what you are planning up in the future. So, 
all the emails will be done by AI, more or less, <laughs> which is an interesting scenario. And look at Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram. Their trajectories are really the same, more or less. You will be able to describe the next postings. Either you type it or you just talk. And there will be an AI, maybe, I think with Snapchat is still open AI. And they will write the next 10 postings for you. Either you are on the beach with your friends, or you're in front of a new car, or you have a new partner. Well, my goodness, I don't know. And then this written text will go to DALI, for example, if we stay within the OpenAI environment, will provide some beautiful pictures. And automatically the AI will send, I don't know, every 10 minutes or every day a new posting from you. And all the postings that are in reply to your Instagram account or to your whatever social media account will also come from other AI. So you have, I don't know, billions of AI posts daily communicating with each other. So we have the perfect world of artificial posts. Well, AI revenues will crumble because nobody is buying anything anymore. But this is not a problem we want to face today. Interestingly, I had an idea that I say, so what is important? Important is who can I trust as a person? If everything is synthetic, if everything is artificial, if everything is non-authentic, suddenly I had a feeling that I want to know who can I trust? And there was this other idea about the personal experience. If all the AI are communicating and doing everything normally people do, and humans are social beings, and now we outsourced here our social media communication into the artificial world, what is our personal experience? What is left? How do we form ourselves? How do we learn how we become better? How we grow? How we fail? how we stand up and i had this thought that i want to use this new technology that will come in the next years because they can also open up something and it is something that i want to experience personally not virtually i want a personal experience of those things and if you can experience in some years, all synthetic realities, either sitting in front of a screen or in a virtual reality, whatever. How sad it is to have not one real reality where you can be. And somehow this brought me to the idea, at first, I don't care if it's Microsoft or Google, and all these artificial cloud centers where you have millions of GPUs running and creating this virtual world. Why don't we use this artificial intelligence to create something tangible? Something, an example, that will be in my life, that I can touch. When I made the video about proteomics and how Alpha Code or Alpha Fold 2, as it's called currently, is helping researcher in developing new protein structures creating new molecular machine within our human cells. I thought if this is the way for new medicine to emerge, for new disciplines to emerge, what new researchers will work with, with this hyper-intelligent artificial assistant, if you want, right next. Nature makes a different. Nature does not have the supercomputer center from Google or in Microsoft that uses electricity of a whole nation. They do it with sunlight or with sugar molecules or, I don't know, somehow this intelligence encoded in an organic substrate. If you think about genomics, I think it is fascinating how you can encode intelligence into molecular structures. And I think this is a reason I am in research and I think this is the way I want to apply and work with AI in my personal future. 
If you have seen the movie Blade Runner, there's a particular scene where both men, I think it's on the top of a building, and I think it's dark and it's raining outside. And this other person describes his life and that he's preparing to go for the last step. Why just see this on a screen? Why not have a life where you can explore this? Why not create something tangible? If we have AI, who knows the last 10,000 research publication in biology, the last 100,000 research publication in genomics, the last 1 million research publication in molecular, I don't know what, while we are just using it for our simple purposes of news, media, whatever. Maybe I want to start to use it in a completely different way.